you know, so far. And uh, I'm really happy to share with you that as a team, we have been able to achieve a lot. And I'll tell you why I say that. Uh, EGRO Foundation is a research-based policy think tank in Delhi, set up in October 2018. We started with an objective of providing research-based policy advice to the government and other stakeholders whosoever are with us seeking our opinion. While COVID was setting in, we knew we could not do much of these activities. So we started the seminar series, getting the best policymakers across the world to come and sit with us and talk about contemporary issues, not only within our country, but even global contemporary issues. So, and we wanted to bring in a blend of foreigners and Indians. So happy to share three Nobel laureates spoke to us, Professor Nanak Kakwani. He has spoken to us on series of poverty talks. We did something for the new international economic order under G20. We did something under G20 for women empowerment and climate. So to that extent, EGRO Foundation has been working on contemporary economic issues, which are very, very important for our country. As you would know, last three years, agriculture sector attempt to reform it, withdrawal of bills, burning issues, all this came up. EGRO Foundation could not have stayed behind on that. We were pursuing it constantly. Minimum support price is an issue. How do you tackle it? My dear friend from IIM Ahmedabad, Satish Deodhar, wrote a beautiful paper, and he's not new to EGRO. We have been having the advantage of his thoughts on numerous occasions, but this paper that he wrote in EPW is a real good paper. And we had done earlier a talk on MSP, where we had invited uh, Dr. Pramod Kumar from Jersey, Lucknow, and he could not come because he was hospitalized. So we quickly put the two together. We said Professor Satish on his EPW paper and what was remaining for Pro Professor Pramod earlier. And then we had a team of discussants sit together and we requested Dr. Vishindas, who's the founding, co founding director with me uh, at EGRO, to chair the session. As you know, uh, Professor Vishendas himself has a very illustrious career. He uh, is a professor and has interest in sustainable agriculture, risk management, international trade and commerce. He works at, he also works at IIPA. As ex-chairman of CSCP, the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare at the level of the Secretary to the Government of India, he has rich experience of formulation of agriculture price and non-price policies, nuances of fixing MSP of various agriculture commodities. So he has also been he has served as uh, FAO of United Nations Organization as a chief technical advisor in his stint with the UNO. He provided high-level technical and economic advice relating to food security, SDGs, agriculture marketing, and brought out eight reports. We requested Professor Dr. Ashok Vishindas to chair this session so that we can have the best on the issue of MSP. With this, I hand over the session to Dr. Vishindas to take the proceedings further. Dr. Vishindas. Yes, th thank you, Professor Charan Singh, for uh, using such a kind word. And uh, he has set the tone uh, for uh, making it very exciting as usual. And Professor Charan Singh has been heading uh, in a way the e grow and he is spearheading uh, and doing the research, original research and research based all those things. And uh, now I I have a privilege of having the illustrious uh, panelist. Uh, let me start with the Professor Satish Devda. He requires no introduction, but for the sake of uh, uh, our uh, protocol. I, I introduce him. So, Professor Sati Devdar is a professor of economics at IIM Ahmedabad. He has worked on imperfectly competitive market structure, agriculture, trade, 
food quality and CSR issue. He has conducted research project for India's Ministry of Food Processing Industry, Ministry of Agriculture, Indian Bank, Economic Research Service, or the U.S. Department of Agriculture. He also provides a lot of informal uh, inputs and the research uh, which he has done to the top uh, levels in the think tank such as Niti Ayo. Recently, also he had a meeting with the uh, with the honorable member of the Niti Ayog on certain inputs. He was selected as the Hevlet Fellow of International Agriculture Trade Research Consortium during 2006 to 2008. He was the recipient of outstanding PhD dissertation award from the U.S. Food Distribution Research Society. He has also been the recipient of distinguished young professional award for excellence in research uh, from IIM MDAP. He has authored a number of articles, monographs, and books. His books, Day to Day Economics, is a, is a national bestseller in non fiction category, Professor Devdar by the pioneer convener of largest annual computerized common admission test that is CAD, which is very popular among the youngsters. So everybody knows the CAD, so it requires no, and that leads to um, it's a very, very competitive, competitive exam. He has completed his master's in economics from the Gokhale Institute of Politics and Economics, Pune and received PhD in Agriculture Economics from the OU State University. Uh, let me turn to uh, uh, Professor Fandia Goyari. Dr. Fanindra Goyari is currently a professor of Economics University at Hyderabad. He successfully completed his UGC Raman Fellowship uh, period and postdoctoral research work at the Texas Christian University during 2016 to 2017. He has nearly 23 years of rich teaching experience in economics at the master degree level. He completed his MA economics from Guwahati University, MPhil from Indira Gandhi Institute of Development Research, which is a very premier institution in Bombay and uh, now Mumbai in PhD in Agriculture Economics from the University of Hyderabad. His pertinent research interests are broadly in agriculture economics with special reference to summer study, irrigation development, uh, weather risk and non-parametric economic modeling. That's very interesting. Tourism and health economics, see the diversity in his research and development economics, Indian economy, and, and development issue. His research team has published more uh, than 49 research papers which appeared in many referred journals. He has published four books till now. He has guided 17 PhD scholars and 16 MPhil scholars. Some of his successful research scholars are now working as regular faculty members in various institutions like NIT, and SMVD University, NIPFP, New Delhi, SRM University, IC Bangalore, IIT Palagar, and, and so on and so forth, Central University of Jammu, and various colleges in India. So, now let me have the privilege of introducing uh, Dr. Kedar Vishnu. Dr. Kedar Vishnu is an assistant professor of economics at Narsi Munji Institute of Management Study in Mumbai. Before that, he worked as an assistant professor at Chris, that is the team to be University Pune, and Dr. P. R. Ambedkar, is scholar of economics. Bangalore. He received PhD in economics from ISAC Bangalore. He has been presenting his research on institutional economics and agriculture economic and agriculture and applied economic association. USA for the last five years, and he is the winner of early career. Time. So these are the brief. Uh, the list is long, but I have cut short of the discussion, and uh, I think uh, most. Uh, uh, audience know them personally i'm sure and this topic the minimum support price people have different perception some are uh, based on research some are based on impression so i'm i'm very sure this particular session on the webinar will be very useful let me set the context and then i will open the floor uh, to the our uh, esteemed panelists, starting with Professor Satish Devdar, this minimum support price 
it's misunderstood by many, including some economists. Let me give how it is started. India was, India has moved from net food importing country to self-sufficiency and then net food exporting. In mid 60s, we used to heavily depend on on the, our supply chain, especially we from USA under PL 480. Now, what happens? Sometimes the food uh, supply can be used as an instrument of political arm twisting. Let me give an example. BLI, India has burnt its finger. Uh, in the mid 60s, in USA, from where we were getting the wheat in bulk quantity under PL 480, and our nation was depending on cereal on mainly on this. What happened? USA had some uh, war with the Vietnam. And that country, USA, wanted India to support their cause politically. But India has a different idea because politically and the national interest did, did, uh, dictate that it is not in the national interest of India to support USA. So uh, as a retaliation, uh, USA imposed a ban on supply and the sudden abrupt uh, uh, the shipment of a shipment of wheat was done and there was a hue and cry. Uh, what happened? The Prime Minister of India has to go to the White House to persuade that the then uh, USA uh, President London B. Johnson. And he, uh, he didn't meet her very immediately on par and she, she was our, the, the Prime Minister of a national uh, sovereign country, India, was made to wait in the White House for four hours. And that she felt very insulting when she returned and then called the top agriculture economist scientists. See, whatever be the cost, let us start the, the food, food self sufficient country so that Atmirbar. And then uh, it came, a lot of discussion were held during those time. I don't have time to, uh, to get, tell with all those things. But the short point is that was the turning point in, 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 in India's agriculture uh, policy and then many people a little while earlier they say uh, unless you assure the farmers whatever they produce will be sold in the market because the markets were very 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 fluctuating and the farmers were not sure whatever they invest whatever they incur the cost will be recovered by the uh, selling of those products so the idea came from there the farmers Whatever you produce, it will be, if it is not sold in the market, India, the, the state agency, the public uh, procurement agency will procure it. And then um, the two institutions, uh, namely the CACP, the Commission on Agriculture Costs and Prices, but to fix the minimum support price. And at the same time, the Food Corporation of India was also established within, within a one week of the time with in January 1965 and uh, on 8th January 65 the CACP came into being and on 14th January 1965 uh, Food Corporation of India the idea was to, to give a very clear signal to farmers you don't worry about procurement and uh, you are if, if it, the market price go below the uh, below your cost we are here to support and that's the genesis of minimum support price now people argue that it's no longer required in all those things so i'm i'm opening the floor to 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 give to get the idea and their, their perspective of the of the top researcher in agriculture economics so let me open the floor and uh, Professor Satish Dev, there. I think uh, you uh, we we open the floor for Satish Dev. Satish Dev, the now floor is yours, and uh, you enlighten us uh, from your views on this. Sure. Um, how much time should I take? Uh, uh, maybe we are about uh, fifteen to twenty minutes, but we are flexible. Yeah. The so, idea is that those three panelists will speak. And yeah. then we will open the Q and A for for our audience, and right. uh, and but I we are flexible. We 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 do not uh, strictly follow those fifteen dollars. So long uh, the points are uh, right. Uh, right. Yes. So uh, fair enough. We are all professors. So show me a yellow card 
इफ आई एम लेट और फाइनली रेड कार्ड विशन जी विशन जी बिफोर ही स्टार्ट डॉक्टर प्रमोद कुमार सॉरी ये जस्ट 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 डॉक्टर प्रमोद कुमार आई एम सॉरी डॉक्टर प्रमोद कुमार आई डोंट नीड आई एक्सक्लूडेड दैट आई विल बी हैप्पी आई हैव नो प्रॉब्लम नो नो आई सॉरी आई आई डिडंट सी योर नेम सो आई लेट मी सी डॉक्टर प्रमोद कुमार इज द डायरेक्टर ऑफ गिरी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डेवलपमेंट स्टडी प्रीवियसली ही वर्कड एट प्रोफेसर इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक चेंज बेंगलोर before joining icf he worked at the national council of applied economic research new delhi and the institute of economic growth delhi he was fellow under the international visitors leadership program sponsored by us government he has been visiting scholar to glasgow university oecd fao paris he is presently an executive member of indian journal of agriculture marketing and justice he has been the member of various committee of the union and state government currently he is chairing working group on crop husbandry agriculture input demand and supply projection constituted by niti ayog in fact this is a brief but he has many more uh, accreditation to his, his credit and uh, uh, so this is uh, and he has author co-author more than 12 research volume his latest book Contact farming and land tenancy in India: Prospects and Challenges is published by Sage, which is very, 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 very good uh, uh, book. He has published around seventy research papers, seven zero uh, in referred national and international journals. He has published articles in high impact journals. He was conferred on the I R I D R C. India Social Science Research Award for the work on public distribution system. Its major areas of research includes agriculture economics, environmental economics, rural development, and development economics. The, so uh, this is a uh, thing now, uh, uh, Professor uh, Satish Dev. Sure. So uh, let me share my uh, slides. Uh, Yeah. So, can everybody see my uh, slide? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, very short title: Minimum Support Price. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. Uh, this reflects on uh, the paper I recently wrote in EPW, and actually, I did this paper, in fact, for the Pune International Center. So, I co-authored with uh, Dr. Vijay Kelkar. Uh, as we all would know, he was the one who talked about GST Council and which happened, right? All right. So, uh, just to give synopsis, you know, I'll just briefly tell you, you know, there was a false start in 2020, and now there is a pause in the farm reforms, right? So, why this happened? I'll spend some time on this. Then I'll talk about the in the today's times impracticality of minimum support price. I'll spend time on that. Uh, as was mentioned by the uh, session chair, uh, you know, times are different. Different times, different policies. So MSP was extremely useful in the earlier times because, and uh, frankly, I didn't know about. Yeah, frankly, I didn't know about the Lyndon Johnson story, but glad to know here from the chair. Uh, so times are different, therefore policies are different. Now I think uh, you know the, uh, we are in a new regime, and therefore probably MSP is not going to make sense, which uh, I will describe in detail. And then I'll also leave a thought for the new farm reforms 2.0 which after the pause now we should begin uh, doing something about it so this is in three phases i'll do all right so uh, i'm calling this as punash hariyo there's a you know uh, i'd like to go back in time uh, if you remember uh, dr bhimrao ambedkar you know, he was championing the cause of the downtrodden in the early part of the 20th century and then for four or five years he was away in us for doing phd and when he returned but there was a lull, but when he returned, his first editorial he wrote was titled as Punasya Haryom, that is, let's make a new beginning. Same, same was true with uh, Lokmanya Tilak, when he was jailed for six years in Mandalay. You know, there was a complete lull in Congress on the political front. So when he returned, in Kesri, he wrote his first editorial, which was called Punasya Haryom. So I'm using that uh, catchphrase for agriculture reforms as well. 
town after a lull of four or five years, I think we have to do Punascha Haryom. So that's what I think uh, I'm referring to. So you know, why was there a false start in 2020? The new three new two, two new acts were uh, thought through. Uh, one was to promote contract farming. I've, I'm not going to take the names of the acts; they are too long. But one was for promoting contract farming. Second was for allowing farmers to sell produce nationally anywhere, not just in the local APMC. And uh, the third act that was amended was the Essential Commodities Act, which allowed now uh, stockpiling. Uh, basically, no, there was no limit, going to be no limit on how much uh, food processing firms can stockpile. Now, these three acts uh, had a false start uh, because there was a negative perception about the reforms. First of all, you know, COVID pandemic had hit, right? And it was a bad timing to start for reforms. 1991 reforms also started because there was a panic, because there was a big issue. But the policy reforms were in the same sector where the panic had occurred. Here, COVID-19 pandemic has occurred, and you are trying to, in the, those conditions, trying to have uh, uh, reforms in the agriculture sector. So that was a problem to start with. Uh, second, the bill was issued by a farm ordinance without much discussion in Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha, right? Uh, third, many stakeholders, small farmers, traders, FPOs, civil servants were not consulted. It was through an uh, ordinance. Large beneficiaries, as you can imagine, you know, in typical economics argument, that whenever policy changes occur, there are beneficiaries and some lose out, there are winners and losers. Now, winners are very large, but they are spread thinly spread across the country. For each one, the gain is much smaller. But the losers are a few and much more organized. And therefore, they could come on the streets. And so we witnessed that in 2020 and even this year also, some time ago. You know, again, there were uh, agitations in Delhi. So those few losers who lose a lot are able to organize well, and that's what happened. It was, again, an impression was created that MSP will eventually go away. That was not likely to be, but probably government did a probably bad job at conveying uh, what they could not have conveyed. Uh, and of course, when all these things happen, you know, there are always elements waiting in the wings outside the country to uh, create suspicion and fear and they supported the agitation. So that was the false start that we talked about. And once I talk about the uh, MSP, I'll talk about the Purusha Haryom, what needs to be done now, right? Uh, in fact, the pause that really occurred, uh, you know, because it happened because petition was filed in Supreme Court uh, and there was a stay on the act, these three acts uh, on 12 January, 2021. Then a committee was appointed by Supreme Court. It submitted its report in March 2021. It was extremely sympathetic to the reform uh, acts that were brought in. However, even before that, government had cold feet and they had withdrawn the acts. So that's the story of the false start. So therefore, let's need to, we need to make a new beginning. So let me come to now MSP. Uh, why MSP is impractical? A number of reasons why MSP is impractical. It's a blanket single MSP for a crop, uh, which is extremely iniquitous. Why do I say this? We have actually uh, 14 major agroclimatic zones. If you subdivide them, about 127 zones with different productivities for different crops. Local market conditions are different for input and output prices. And therefore, cost estimates vary a lot in each of these regions. Of course, some may be very closer to each other, but there is almost sometimes 30 to 40% difference between the cost estimates. So therefore, a single price, MSP price for a single crop doesn't work in a continental or a subcontinental country like India. Can we have multiple MSPs? Well, a session chair, I remember in earlier uh, EGRO uh, seminar, he talked about this uh, issue, but it's practically impossible. In 29 states, if you, have, if you start having different MSPs for same crop, it's going to create problems. It will be probably arbitrage. People slowly selling in different markets. That's going to create a, a big uh, problem. So therefore, that's also not on. By the way, the cost estimates that are available to calculate MSP are almost three to four years old, because in real time data we don't get it. So therefore, whatever you do today is based on data that comes with a lag of about three years. There has been discussion about how what cost, right? Whether A2 or C2. 
uh, and all economists agree that C2 cannot be used because, uh, you know, going by the Ricardian rent principle, price really decides how much is the rent earned by the farmers. The variable cost are basically what the A2 costs are basically, out-of-pocket expenses plus some variable costs. Rent, fixed assets, interest, basically these are fixed costs and therefore you cannot include those costs as if to add additional 50% to it to get to the MSP. Now, there's other problem. There are common costs. It is not that a single crop, we don't have monoculture, right? There are uh, mixed cropping hap happens, intercropping, relay cropping happens. Therefore, even among the variable inputs, whether it's fertilizer, electricity, water, when you give, you have to apportion those costs to two different, two, three different crops. And that's also very difficult. On what basis you will apportion these costs? You know, there's a, they say that Ramsey pricing can be used depending on, depending on the demand elasticities. Where demand is highly inelastic, you apportion more cost to that uh, commodity. But that's not the case in agriculture. Most of the agricultural commodities have very elastic uh, demand. So therefore, uh, you cannot have that rule also to divide the costs. Even uh, fixed costs, setup costs, whether it's uh, uh, you know pump or a well or a tractor, again, issue will come up. How will you apportion this cost among different crops? So that's therefore that's a problem. Let's suppose we are taking care of all these problems. Reach of MSP is extremely poor. Less than 10% conservative estimates say that less than 10% of the farmers, that is households, get MSP. And value of produce sold at MSP is also equally less than 10%. That means most of India does not get help. Farmers do not get uh, benefit from MSP. It's only four, five, maybe six states. Punjab, Haryana, Western, UP, and few others may get help. There also, it's not that all farmers get the help. About uh, close to 30 to 40 percent of the farmers in these states also uh, benefit from MSP. One other kind of issue is about uh, uh, poor farmers. The MSP, are we giving it for uh, poor farmers? If the objective is to give income to the poor farmers, two-third of the income of poor farmers comes from non-farm activities. It is only the rich farmer who is benefiting from MSP. And therefore, on multiple counts, a blanket MSP, single MSP for each crop doesn't make any sense. Let's look at economic costs of buying MSP, storing and distributing. There have been a number of studies done in the past and they have been, uh, you know, uh, basically used everywhere, but the still we somehow miss out the point. To procure an MSP, to sell, to sell it at PDS, and then there's additional 40% cost of administration, storing, distribution. The, the costs are more than lakhs of crores. One study by Gulati says value of excess stock is 2.56 lakh crores. You can add additional cost of 70,000 crores because this 2.56 lakh crores, which is invested into this, if it was used for something else, if you look at the rate of return on the other thing that you would have done, so there could be additional uh, 70,000 crore costs. Compare this with the price stabilization fund, which is only 500 rupees, uh, 500 crores, or the agri infrastructure fund, which is 1 lakh crore, which government has announced. Compared to this, the loss that is occurring because of procurement of MSP crops is extremely high. And this also, for only few states, there also about 30% of the farmers are selling it. Imagine the requirement, imagine the demand made by farmers or some groups that all 23 crops in India should get MSP and everything should be purchased by government. I think we are talking about enormously large cost here. All right, uh, another aspect of this is, you know, there's wastage of, because of improper storage. I'll just give you now, a picture is worth thousand words. Let me give a picture to you. You know, we had opted in 1960s. Uh, a chairperson was telling us that, uh, you know, when we started getting under PL 480, at that time, US had proposed that if you are importing in such huge numbers, you better have modern silos. We still do not have modern silos. Now, of course, last, I think, 10 years, things have changed quite a bit. Uh, we have such silos uh, now, but it's not widespread. So wastage is extremely common in India. And in fact, uh, in any case, FCI storage is not as efficient as in private sector. Uh, yes. Ajo, Ajo, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So therefore, I think what I'm emphasizing at the point is that SCI storage also has its own cost. Whatever, after two years, the nutrition quality of the grains comes down. That's one nutritional loss. Second, there's also issue of spoilage. And there are liquor lobbies who buy the spoiled grains to make, you know what, alcohol, right? So all kind of these behaviors happen because of MSP. Environmental health and nutritional costs, which are not, these are negative externalities. We don't see it directly, but they do happen. 18% of greenhouse gas emissions are by rice in India, in agriculture. Why? Punjab should not be growing rice except basmati. Rest of the rice should be in the coastal area. Rest of the uh, uh, rice should be in the uh, where the, uh, in the south, not in Punjab. Stubble burning, why has become a big problem? Because traditionally Punjab was growing rabi crops. Now rice, they need a lot of water. They grow it early. There's hardly any time between the Kharib crop and the Rabi crop, barely one month they have. And therefore, instead of cutting the stubble, burning is the best solution for them from the individual point of view. And why is this happening? Because you gave farmers an incentive that electricity is 100% free. If I'm breathing now, I'm taking uh, uh, air in, I'm not paying for it. Similarly, if Punjab farmer doesn't pay a single Naya Paisa for electricity, he is going to draw the groundwater for rice, which, which we require in large numbers. So all this uh, obfuscation has happened in the market because of wrong incentive that is coming through subsidies and the MSP, right? Water runoffs, desertification, land salinity, these are the problems extremely common. We all know that is happening in Punjab, Haryana. Fertilizer, subsidized, there is a famous cancer trend. I think from Batinda, it goes to Rajasthan, uh, I've heard, right? Why? Because farmers are exposed to this uh, excess use of uh, fertilizers. All right. So, I mean, I have given, given you, a, you know, three different perspectives on why MSP is completely impractical. Of course, times were different in 1960s. And as the chair of the session mentioned, that, you know, therefore we needed MSP at that time. But now I think things are completely uh, different. And the sooner we get rid of the MSP, the better. Now, just to give you, what should we do next? Just to give you a comparison between MSP and direct benefit transfer. Let's say we have a demand and supply for rice. And this intersection decides the free market price of the rice, right? All economic standard uh, textbook examples, the, the, uh, therefore the area below is the producer's surplus. That is what the farmers would get, right? But we are saying, well, farmers are not getting enough and therefore we should have a MSP, which is much higher. Fair enough, the moment you have MSP, which is much higher, let's uh, say MSP of rice is... Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, uh, Professor yeah. Satish, you, your yeah. slides are not moving. My so slides the, are not moving? Moving, it's not moving because I'm not able to see the figure you are referring to, uh, because it Achha. is... Yeah. It's perfectly fine, it's perfectly fine. So, sir, sir, slides it's are moving. moving from my side. No, we can see it. We can see. It. I can see it I, moving. Okay. Maybe, see, but I, maybe a particular problem. Side, why, why MSP is impractical? That I am able to see. Yeah, I think many others are able to see I'm, as I'm moving ahead. Okay. Right? Then, then there is some some issue in my side. Okay, carry on, please. Right. Right. Okay. So I can send the PPTs to you. I have no problem. Afterwards, I can send the PPTs to you. All right. It's all right. Yeah. So the idea is to give, of course, the MSP has to be higher than the equilibrium price. So let's say MSP of price is much higher. So therefore, what we are saying is there should be additional farmer returns to the farmers to the extent of this trapezoid, trapezoid that you are seeing there, right? Wonderful. But what happens in the process? Now, when the MSP for rice is much higher, right? If price is extremely high here, there was a demand curve here. And therefore, traders, private traders are going to buy much less. MSP is right here, therefore private traders will buy only Q private. But now it becomes a responsibility of the state to buy the rest of the things. But what was being produced when there was an equilibrium price was much less. That was only QFM. Now with higher price, QMSP is what is being produced because farm, you offer higher price to farmers, they will produce more, assuming that it is announced before the sowing season, right? And hopefully that happens every year. 
but if that happens, they will produce too much. Now, when too much is produced, is government buying every year this amount? It's a sacrilege. Government barely buys 30% of the what farmers are producing. So you assure MSP, but you don't buy from them. So let's assume that government was buying. If, it, if government buys everything, then this uh, bigger rectangle is the government expenditure on FCI stocks. This is what government has bought, right? This expenditure is much, much larger than what the additional farmers returns we were thinking of. So it's a, it's a gravity pranayam. Instead of directly eating through the mouth, you are taking your hand around and trying to eat. So if, if, you, if, the, if the idea is to give additional returns, which are this, this uh, white uh, trapezoid, why are we wasting too much uh, in terms of uh, stocks? And I, as I mentioned before, uh, government cannot manage those stocks well. So what's the, uh, what's the uh, uh, you know, solution for this? I think fortunately for us, now we are talking about what is called a direct benefit transfer. Already, already PM Kisan scheme gives 600 rupees per year per owner farmer. And in Orissa, they have matched it 8,000, they are given including to the sharecroppers, right? So perhaps now that we have introduced this idea, the idea of direct benefit transfer is don't disturb the markets. Markets uh, decide the appropriate price based on demand and supply. And therefore, let the price be decided by markets. However, if you want to help the destitutes without distorting the markets, then you can give direct cash transfer. That's the idea, right? So here we can now have expand the uh, direct benefit transfer scheme where an integrated scheme can be thought of for the poor farmers. And then it replaces all kinds of subsidies. Power subsidy, fertilizer subsidy, and MSP, everything will go away. And one direct benefit transfer, if you allow, let the market decide how much is produced that based on demand and supply. In fact, power subsidies, what happens to it? When farmers don't pay anything, that means the government is supposed to pay to the distribution companies. Government does not pay to the distribution companies. Therefore, distribution companies do not pay to the power generation companies. And therefore, power generation companies do not pay to Coal India. Look at the consequence that happens because of all this, and therefore all are in uh, bad, uh, bad shape. All right. The second aspect is uh, we can have what is called a structural adjustment program. One of the reasons why there was a pause and government had to go back on the farm reforms was that they did not take every everybody along, right? Uh, you know, there should be a structural relief for over three to five years to APMCs. APMCs are sitting on more than, as I speak, more than 12,000 crores of revenues every year in few states. Once you have tasted blood, you don't want to give it up. If all of a sudden government comes and changes the laws, APMCs are going to fight back saying that why should we lose our money? And therefore, just like GST Council was formed, right? Uh, State, there were state taxes, there were central taxes, and therefore both com, uh, came together in the council and then decided how to integrate the taxes, and therefore uh, central government decided to part with some of the revenue to state governments. Similarly, you know, in our college days, we used to think that uh, agriculture is state subject. It's state subject in the sense that you cannot have income tax because therefore central cannot impose uh, income tax on it, right? But otherwise, uh, MSP is decided by the central government. Food processing industry is with the central government. Many other subsidies are given by state government. That means it's in the concurrent list. That means there is a possibility for having GST-like council. It could, one could call it agriculture and food marketing council where states and center come together. And APMCs, which will lose out heftily, there could be a three to five year program where they will be given some compensation or going away with APMC markets in the sense that a farmer did not necessarily sell it at APMC, but he or she could sell it anywhere and get a better price. Similarly, it could be a staggered approach for reforms. First, it could be a fruit. If you want to give up MSP, give up on fruit and vegetables. It will hardly matter because the MSP is not declared on many of the fruits and vegetables. Then come to cotton and sugar, then to millets, and finally to rice and wheat, which is the holy grail, right? So give time of five to seven years and slowly jhatka will not work uh, probably. You have to do it very in a staggered manner. 
frankly speaking, if you give up the subsidies, then it's the nature and economics, agriculture, nature and economics is going to play its role. Rice, non basmati should never be grown in Punjab and Haryana. It should be moved south. Wheat must move to Gangetic Plains and pulses and oil seeds should be promoted in Punjab Haryana. All these Hindi movies talking about chane ke khet mein, why chana, why chana there, why oil seeds there? That is what was traditionally produced there, not rice. Rice should certainly go away from there, right? So therefore, again, you cannot just by dictate, we are not Soviet Union, we are not China. You cannot just do this overnight. Therefore, production limiting and production shifting direct benefit transfers to states will have to be thought through. And that means we'll have to have a council like a GST council. What would they, so the, I'll call this as agriculture and food marketing council. What should be done? The idea is basically it's a cooperative federalism. Agriculture is state subject, but it's also in the concurrent list. Since planning commission is not there anymore, how are firms, uh, how are states to express their views? And therefore a council is certainly needed. It will be a consultative process among tech programs, experts, politicians, farmers, processors. The best thing about this council would be that closed door, off camera meetings of opposition parties, ruling parties, different stakeholders, meeting helps in public posturing of politicians gets protected because it's in closed doors. Finally, whatever happens, everybody may think that I am the winner. If you do it this way, I think in the long run, five to seven years, uh, MSP may go and we may have direct benefit transfers. And I think in my opinion, that is a good idea for the Indian agriculture. So I'll stop here. So this is the paper I wrote, uh, making a new beginning on farm reforms for Pune International Center. And very recently now I have co-authored with uh, Dr. Kielka. This has come out in economic EPW. So I'll stop here. Uh, thanks yeah. for giving me this opportunity. Yes, yes. Th thank you, Professor Satish. You, you, you have generated so much interest and you have flagged so much issue. I think there will be a lot of questions towards the end. Uh, we don't want to raise at this point in time. Uh, let me yeah. apologize to Professor Satish Gopal. I I could not uh, introduce him because uh, he is uh, on the on the list. Uh, and earlier I didn't find his name in the in the list. Therefore I skipped with the uh, introduction. But I find him. He is there. Professor Suresh Gopal uh, is a currently an associate professor of finance and symbiosis Institute of Business Management, Bangalore and previously served many institutions like Christ University, Bangalore, CMS College and SRM University. He holds an advanced certificate program in academic research and data analysis in research in IIM Hoi Code with a robust skill set that includes teaching, Microsoft Office, staff development, PowerPoint research and more. Suresh Gopal contributes valuable insight in the, in, into the industry. Uh, Suresh, uh, on behalf of EGRO and on my own behalf, I welcome you and I obviously welcome. Now I, I request Professor Pramod Kumar ji to kindly express his views. Now let us uh, be, uh, uh, um, I have reviewed the time available with us. Now we are left with 45 minutes because we have to conclude by 5.30. So we have uh, four more uh, speakers. So let us uh, restrict to 10 to 12 and then there will be question and answer. So my request to you, each panelist, please uh, confine 10 to 12 minutes. And if the time permits and the, depending on the interest of the audience, we will come in the second round. Otherwise, so over to you, Professor uh, Pramod. Well, thank you, Chair. Uh, Finally, I am recognized. I am there. <laughs> so, oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in I fact, think, uh, uh, somehow earlier uh, your video, uh, I was not able to see yeah, yeah. yours yeah. and uh, Professor yeah. Gopal. My, so, my apology. <laughs> yes, it's my apology because I could not. <laughs> yes. So, uh, thank you very much. You have uh, said 10 to 12 minutes. So, I have put only four or five slides. Uh, and I'm now, uh, I think uh, Satish has already made uh, the detailed presentation and he has also uh, introduced MSP and also 
uh, he has questioned the way MSP is implemented a single MSP for the entire country uh, across states. Uh, I will be uh, dwelling upon that issue uh, uh, slight uh, in, in, uh, with more emphasis. And my basic question is on the minimum support price system itself. I'll be having two, three slides and I'll emphasize uh, uh, I don't know on what basis uh, this system was started with when we were in a uh, shortage and our country needed wheat and rice and uh, uh, when uh, we were importing under PL 480 as Satish uh, uh, initially the chairman you yourself mentioned and uh, this was a system brought up to encourage farmers and then vis a -vis, uh, public distribution system was brought in to uh, to protect the consumer. Uh, but the system has become, I think, uh, a, a big burden. Uh, now, on the one hand, we are we have been keeping protecting farmer. Uh, on the name of protecting farmer, I I feel the other way around. It, we are exploiting the farmer with uh, the minimum support price system, and uh, also uh, the system is exploiting the government on the consumer front by distributing. Uh, 80 crore people uh, free, uh, mostly wheat and rice. So it has uh, become a system, I think, uh, which com uh, uh, which completely needs overhaul. It it needs uh, not only modification; it needs uh, a new thinking. We need to uh, throw this system out and bring in some better system, uh, probably more led by the market, uh, which market will decide. And then there is a there, there is a protection for really those who are poor. Uh, maybe we say 15% poverty rate now uh, with the, a reduction of 20 25% of the poverty uh, during uh, 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 this regime's time of 10 years. Um, uh, I wonder if we really are at 15% uh, of the poverty rate. Why are we? Which turns out around uh, say. 2025 crore. Why are we distributing free food to 80 crore people through this minimum support price system? And uh, uh, government, on the one hand, uh, we have to uh, we see the anger of the farmer. On the other hand, the consumer is also not very happy. They say only food uh, you distribute wheat and rice is not sufficient uh, to run the kitchen. We need everything, and everything else is uh, touching the sky. And the prices are touching the sky. Uh, I wonder, really, this is uh, helping the consumer also. The, 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 the same system. Now uh, uh, we have claim and uh, a lot of uh, uh, this thing uh, that DJP says we have raised more uh, uh, the uh, minimum support price during our 10-year regime compared to the previous regime. So I was uh, just uh, me and uh, my colleague. Uh, he is also here. Uh, uh, he is uh, uh, Kedar Vishnu uh, will also be speaking. We are working out uh, on the broader issues of this uh, minimum support price and uh, some of the data we compiled. Uh, this is a uh, work in progress. So he will be uh, just presenting the farmer's income aspect. Uh, so uh, we just uh, mapped out the minimum support price. Uh, from 94, we, we are just looking at the past and uh, then the, uh, the, uh, I just compared the uh, 10 years of uh, UPA and 10 years of this uh, regime period, 2004-05 to 13-14 and then 14-15 to 22-23. If we see uh, MSP, Paddy and Wheat, uh, 560 and 640, this was the 2004-05 price, uh, which is which it increased to 1360 and 1450 for Paddy and Wheat. In 1415 and uh, now 2014, 21, uh, 2125 in 22, 23. Now, if one works out the growth rate, this is uh, a wholesale price index, which uh, I, 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 uh, I think it is 2011 12 prices, uh, somewhat uh, which I have uh, calculated. Now, if we see the growth rate, nominal prices in, in paddy and wheat, uh, because uh, talking of MSP of other commodities uh, really doesn't mean anything because there is no procurement and uh, any price we declare in any way farmer is not getting that price and talking of MSP growth and uh, all those uh, 
वो शायद एक बेईमानी है हमारे पूरे सिस्टम के साथ सो कैन इफ इफ वी सी दिस ग्रोथ रेट ड्यूरिंग 2004-5 टू 14-15 टू 13-14 पेडी इंक्रीज बाय 9.78 परसेंट पर एनम दिस इज ईयर ऑन ईयर एवरेज ऑफ 10 इयर्स पेडी इंक्रीज बाय 9.78 परसेंट वीट इंक्रीज बाय 8.58 परसेंट ऑफ द 10 इयर्स ऑफ प्रीवियस रीजिम which is half of that in 2014-15 to 22-23, 5.08 and 4.76. Wholesale price index increased by 6.19%. This is what uh, the BJP says, uh, Mangai uh, has increased much more during U uh, UPA time, 6.19 compared to 3.54 of the, uh, uh, the NDA or uh, say uh, BJP time. Now, uh, deflating this and uh, getting the real price really uh, give us the true picture. Uh, what has happened uh, during this period? If you see paddy growth, the real price, uh, price uh, MSP growth was 4.3% during previous regime and 1.67, uh, almost uh, so much more. Than... Not it's not uh, visible. No, sir, slides only, are not. only the first slide or plus side, side is visible. Okay, I'll just uh, uh, now it is visible. Yeah, yes. now it is. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Because uh, once you put in presentation mode, uh, sometimes it doesn't work. So if you just just see the uh, nominal growth is nine to five and eight point five to four uh, during these two regimes, and real growth is four point three one paddy during previous regime. 1.67 during this regime, wheat is 3.05 compared to 1.39. This is much less than half, almost uh, uh, one third increase uh, during uh, the present regime compared to previous regime. And probably that is the reason uh, why farmers are in so much distress. I'll uh, come to that point uh, later. Now, uh, again, the, the other controversial issue is uh, Swaminathan, uh, uh, report which said uh, C2 we are having A2 plus family labor uh, FL uh, A2 FL plus 50 percent. Uh, this is what the formula has been devised. The existing MSP. If uh, we bring in the Swaminathan, how much there will be increase is the uh, uh, you can see in this uh, uh, particular column. I I hope you can see now the slide. Uh, although the, this is uh, smaller. Uh, if I put in presentation mode, it will be bigger. You can uh, uh, hopefully you can read it. Uh, so now, if if you see the difference, 21, 22, uh, and 23, 24, uh, this Kedar has worked out this uh, because 23, 24, we don't have a minimum sub, uh, we don't have CACP uh, cost of cultivation uh, data. So we have just uh, 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 we have forecasted the CAC, uh, the cost of cultivation data for 23, 24. So I just compare 21, 22. Uh, the uh, increase, if we see the increase, basically paddy and wheat, where the, the, the two uh, crops where uh, really we have the uh, the protection of procurement, the increase uh, moving from A2 to C2 is uh, not that high compared to the other crops. You can see sunflower, the increase is 102%. Uh, in the case of uh, Jowar, it is 85%, Ragi, it is 81%, groundnut, it is 52%, sunflower, it is 70%. I mean, uh, almost double amount, one and a half amount uh, have to, you have to give as MSP if we move uh, from A2 to C2, uh, which really the Swaminathan formula uh, says. Uh, again, there are problems in this uh, formula as well. I, I'll be pointing out in uh, the next slides uh, how this C2 is worked out because C2 is uh, including the cost of uh, land, own land, uh, which is basically opportunity cost of uh, land uh, or the rental value which is included in C2. Uh, now, you see the rental value of own land. Uh, I have the two crops here for which uh, we have this, these values available. Uh, paddy and wheat. Uh, uh, the second one is wheat. I, I am sorry, I have written paddy. This first is paddy and the second is wheat. And uh, these two uh, reflect, uh, if you see the rental value of uh, paddy, it is as much high as 37,000, 36,000 in Punjab and Haryana. 
and it moves uh, down to 30,000 in Andhra Pradesh, 18,000 in West Bengal, 14,000 in Urissa, uh, Gujarat is 12,000, Maharashtra is 9,000. So rental value of own land, in a way, this is uh, the opportunity cost of the land, which also reflects the productivity. So if the productivity is higher, the, the, the state where productivity is higher, naturally rental value will be higher. So if we have the variation is from 9,000, 10,000 to 37,000, this is for one crop. Uh, again, I really, uh, I wonder how CACP has uh, allocated this crop level uh, rental value. Paddy, uh, in the case of wheat, it is 27, 26,000 in Punjab and Haryana. It is 7,000 in Karnataka, 9,000 in Chhattisgarh, uh, 16,000 in Himachal Pradesh. I don't know Himachal Pradesh, uh, how this high uh, amount, Rajasthan is 18,000. So uh, if we add up these two, rental value of own land for paddy and wheat together, which uh, basically makes a per annum, per acre cost of rental value, this itself is 37,000 plus uh, Punjab 26,000. So it turns out around 65,000 per acre per year. Haryana also is not behind 63,000. On the other hand, some of the other states, it will be around 15 for, uh, to 20,000, and the other states will be around 30,000 to 40,000. Now, uh, I was looking at uh, the earning by the farmer. Uh, by just multiplying MSP with the price, uh, uh, MSP with the, uh, the uh, uh, per acre uh, output or yield, it nowhere it touches 65,000 in the case of paddy and wheat. You just calculate the value of paddy and wheat together, average value of the yield multiplied by minimum support price, it doesn't cross 50, 55,000 rental value itself is 65,000. That means farmer is having 10,000 rupees less of minimum support price compared to the rental value itself. So that questions the minimum support price system itself, how they are calculating, what basis they are calculating, uh, I have no idea. Uh, rental value they have shown here, and that exceeds the total amount of uh, the quantity multiplied by the minimum support price. If farmers get minimum support price in most of the states, they get almost uh, 60 70 percent of the minimum support price. We have done survey here 14,000 farmers in Uttar Pradesh during 2018 19. We are going to repeat those uh, farmers again in 24. Now we are almost uh, going to the field. Uh, in all the 75 districts, almost 30 to 40 percent farmers were getting price less than the minimum support price in 17, 18. This is a, 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 a survey of 75 districts in Uttar Pradesh, uh, 15, 14,300 farmers. So minimum support price itself is less than the rental value. Forget about all the cost, the, the, the real cost, if farmer adds up his own labor, if he adds up uh, other uh, uh, co uh, cost of his own uh, resources, including land, the cost exceeds much more than what he yeah. is receiving. Uh, oh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm coming to the last slide only. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is farm harvest price again. Uh, uh, there is a huge variation across uh, states for the farm harvest price. Also, uh, we can have, uh, we can see here uh, 2000, 3000 to 1500. So, the, the huge differences. But uh, the last slide, I, I was just uh, looking at uh, the minimum support price system, uh, whether it has, uh, uh, what it has done in the last 15, 20 years. And uh, just comparing comparing the farmer terms of trade with the organized employment, I remember uh, my uncle used to tell uh, till the 70s, late 70s, the uh, uh, Bisley board or uh, the uh, powerhouse, they, their recruitment goes there in the village and uh, people will say who will go and serve as a servant. We are Malik, we are uh, owner of the land and the uh, 
why would we go in the in the service sector where clerk was uh, considered to be much inferior now i have compared the income of uh, the clerk and the lecturer what they were getting in 93 94 and what they are getting in 24 i can see that difference of 20 times 93 to 24 uh, if the uh, the in the case of clerk it was 20 times in the case of lecturer what i was earning in 93 and uh, what the uh, lecturer today earns it is 15 times more now if we see the msp in 94 it was 350 for uh, wheat and 340 for rice what is the price today 23 price is 2275 uh, for uh, wheat and 2183 for rice per paddy. If we say the same 15 time increase, not 20 times, if, even if 15 time increase in MSP should have happened vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, uh, the salary of the clerk of the lecturer, the MSP today should have been 5250 for wheat and uh, 5100 for, 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 paddy, uh, for paddy. The difference is 131%. That means uh, uh, what farmer is getting today is not even half, uh, I think uh, one tenth. Uh, the huge difference and uh, the uh, if we calculate the revenue, the uh, difference in earning for uh, one acre with the 14 quintal per acre productivity, uh, the difference of earning is today he is earning 31,000 from wheat and uh, 24,000 from rice. He should have earned, uh, if the 15 times uh, the formula we apply, he should have earned 73,000 from uh, wheat and uh, 56,000 from paddy. And if the farmer today gets that uh, MSP high, uh, MSP would be almost uh, 6,000 for wheat and uh, 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 say 5,500 for rice, probably today, again, farmer will say, no, I will not go into service, I will go into agriculture. That is uh, the, the difference. The, if you see the total earning of farmer, total revenue per acre, uh, from uh, uh, 93, he was earning 8,640. Today, he is earning 55,000. I said rental value itself is 65,000. So, he is earning this is minimal earning, not uh, the profit. This is revenue. That means his uh, price in, into his output produced per acre. Revenue into price of wheat and rice put together is 55,000. Whereas his rental value itself is 65,000. And uh, this value comes from his uh, wheat and rice for which procurement takes place where MSP is ensured. Uh, forget about other commodities, uh, how much they will be earning. His actual value should have been today not 55,000, it should have been 129,000. 73,000 is the difference, and uh, that is where we are paying farmer 73,000 per acre less, and we are giving him 6,000 uh, in three installment and saying that, oh, we have done a great job to, to you. This 70,000, even if we pay 6,000, uh, what is the difference? 73,000. Yeah, less uh, professor, professor uh, Pramod, now you have to wind up because, because so you I, have to I, be. I'll, I'll say only the one point part. is, no, point is understood what you said. We have three more speakers. And, but, yeah. uh, sir, I'm concluding with uh, just saying that uh, his uh, subsidy, we are paying 6,000. If we really want him to be at the same terms where 94 he was, we need to pay him per annum 60,000, not 6,000. This is uh, where I'm ending my presentation. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Pro Professor Pramodji. I You raised very interesting point, and there I'm sure there will be many questions on this also, and all the speakers. Let us now turn to, because now I'm afraid we have three more speakers. We are already uh, five, four past five, so hardly 24, 25 minutes left. So I, I don't know I, uh, how to distribute the time among three, and there will be question and answer. But I, I would request Professor Goyari, uh, to be as brief as possible, kindly condense in eight to ten minutes at the max. Uh, that would be so. Floor is over. Over to you. Thank you, uh, Professor Bishandas. Uh, I'm very happy to be here.
and uh, since uh, my name is given as a uh, discussion so i did not prepare any ppt or uh, I, I did not it's fine to, that, so... is, that is fair enough whichever way you can be <laughs> impromptu so that's that's the beauty of this webinar you you be the way you want i mean we are open and we are flexible uh -huh. yeah. and um, i have enjoyed uh, listening to professor Satish Devdar and uh, professor uh, pramod kumar and uh, since uh, the main speaker name is given uh, uh, so I was listening very carefully and uh, uh, EPW article uh, recently published that paper also I have read fully. So uh, Professor uh, Devdar, uh, uh, your presentation was wonderful and uh, uh, topic was touching upon uh, various issues. It is basically a comprehensive uh, topic comprehensive presentation on various issues on uh, minimum support price and how uh, we can go uh, from MSP to uh, direct benefit transfer. So I personally, I have enjoyed and I have learned a lot. Uh, so now a few points, uh, uh, I think uh, two points, uh, Basically, clarificatory in nature. Uh, you have uh, in your paper, you have mentioned uh, uh, various problems like impracticability of cost calculations and the huge cost involved in implementing uh, MSP in India uh, because we are uh, having only uniform, uh, not different. Uh, MSP for different states or different regions. Again, you are suggesting um, uh, now direct benefit transfer mechanism. But what I feel, uh, even I personally like uh, your idea of this uh, direct integrated uh, direct benefit transfer scheme. Uh, wonderful. Uh, scheme and it will save lots of government revenues, uh, which uh, we are losing actually because of implementation of this MSP. Now, one problem uh, in that benefit transfer also, uh, for example, in MSP, uh, we are not taking into account the heterogeneous uh, conditions, uh, income levels of farmers even uh, different market conditions prevailing in different states. So when we are implementing this uh, direct benefit scheme, so from your presentation and from uh, from uh, uh, research paper, EPW, I'm not clear whether we are going to have the same level of same uh, uniform direct benefit transfer system like what we are uh, having in MSP system that I think that can be clear. And second point is, uh, suppose we are implementing, second point is on employment. Suppose we are implementing a direct benefit transfer scheme successfully and uh, very systematically. So in that case, uh, various uh, employees related to uh, Food Corporation of India or who are involved in uh, storage, procurement, warehousing, facilities, maintenance. We don't need, we may not need uh, those employees. So how we are going to solve uh, this uh, reduction of employees under direct benefit scheme that uh, we need to take care. And last point are uh, not directly related to this uh, MSP, but now when we uh, see the cropping pattern, cropping pattern in India has been changing in favor of uh, non-food crops and uh, high value crops. And even if we take uh, the income share of uh, allied sectors like livestock, poultry farming, fisheries, forestry, together. The total income share of this uh, allied sectors uh, has been increasing in recent years. 
in recent decades compared to proper crops. So now we policymakers, we all economists are advocating that uh, there should be diversification. Uh, uh, farmers should go for uh, uh, high value crops or where income generation will be more. So an MSP or direct benefit transfer will be mainly focusing on proper crops. Uh, they are not directly handling this uh, fisheries, livestock, or forestry. So, now, under direct benefit uh, transfer scheme, I think uh, those uh, allied sectors can also be uh, given importance. So, that, uh, these three things uh, I think uh, I, I feel uh, important to mention. Yeah, thank you. Over to uh, Professor Vishen Das. Yeah. You are mute. Uh... Thank you, Professor Goyari. You raised very interesting uh, issues, and those will be some answered towards the end. Now I turn uh, to Professor Suresh Gopal. Suresh, you you will have uh, eight to ten minutes, please. Uh, yes, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, very good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a privilege to me to be here today uh, to engage in this uh, fruitful discussion. In fact, uh, which is the uh, most uh, important one as of now. I thank Professor uh, Sadis and uh, the EGRO uh, Foundation for hosting this webinar. I have uh, uh, some, uh, I've gone through that uh, uh, article actually is very, uh, very well articulated uh, article. And it is such that uh, the pitfalls of that MSP, the current MSP uh, policies like uh, you mentioned about that limited uh, reach uh, because uh, uh, it's not reached to the small farmers uh, and uh, there is no uh, equitable uh, benefit and uh, it is not reached to the many states and uh, market uh, distractions all those things that you have mentioned it and you uh, it's a kind of uh, some uh, uh, question or uh, some point, uh, some suggestion. I'm asking that uh, when it is comes to that uh, inequitable benefit is going for your small farmers. Uh, why you are not suggested or why you are not thinking that way uh, that MSP rate we can fix on the proportionate basis because uh, I have some data relating to the number of uh, uh, the percentage of households uh, holding the land pattern uh, if I say that uh, around um, 52 percentage of uh, households is having less than one acre of land but um, uh, the percentage of loan, uh, I mean, 52 percentage of household having less than uh, one one percentage of uh, uh, one acre, and their total proportion to that land holding so only 3.8 percent, right? That's the main reason why the small farmers is not getting benefit out of MSP, right? The MSP they are taking that average cost and which is they are holding that huge amount of land their cost of production is maybe less so when we are fixing that msp based on that average cost as you told it as per that ms swaminathan sir's uh, formula there that cost is not equitable to the small farmers so that's the reason that inequitable benefit is going for the small farmer this is my one small observation and one more point I was uh, going through that uh, here in, in the suicide, former suicides. I have some data related to state wise uh, uh, former suicide. Um, in Maharashtra, uh, the Maharashtra is actually registering that highest uh, suicide, former suicide. Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, then followed by Telangana, Punjab is coming it. Of course, except in this list of whatever I told it, except Punjab, 
other states it is not implemented that MSP. Wherever MSP is not implemented, and of course the DBT is available in all the, almost all the states now. As per the central government, they are offering that of uh, six thousand rupees for all the all the farmers. In spite of that, the last year suicide ratio, suicide number of suicide is actually is increased it, and it is very particularly higher in these five states like Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra, Telangana, Telangana, and Tamil Nadu. It's a very high. What if that we are transforming from MSP to other DPT or other suggested method, what you are told the AFM Council, and uh, it leads there to more, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, the former suicide, because already they are that underprivileged uh, uh, thing. And I want to reiterate one important point, the purpose of MSP when they introduced it in the year of 1960s, uh, 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 1950s and 60s, uh, the twofold benefit actually they are expected. One is minimum support price for the farmers to continue to grow the essential commodity. It's the first thing. The minimum profit they should get it. Second point here, what are that your article I'm looking at only from that point of view. But on the other side, the MSP was bring down or they brought it for the purpose of to ensure the food security. We know that here out of 116, we are in the range of 111 the hunger poverty, the hunger index. In that case, if we are eliminating that MSP, that uh, index is maybe even goes worst. So, what is your suggestion to reduce those, these things? It's a, another point. And uh, one more uh, thing I was uh, looking at here that environmental and the economic implication. Of course, you you are very well articulated this point. It is I agree with you that. Uh, uh, since most of the farmers are going with wheat and rice, they are uh, getting some remunerative price. They are they are producing that only, so it's causing for the environmental problems. But the suggested method, what you told it, the DBT, how it is uh, you are sure or how you are saying that? What is the promise? This direct benefit transfer uh, will benefit to the environment. I don't know about these things because uh, anyway that the environment of uh, uh, degradation is going to happen in whatever product they are going to make it. But uh, they, we need to uh, come up with a different policy for that sustainability things. And uh, I agree with this your point, uh, this AFM council. Of course, uh, since we are living in the different uh, geographical things, uh, conditions things, the AFM council is maybe the probable solution. Uh, but during this transition period, how the small farmers, because uh, they are uh, they are facing already they are in the vulnerable group and uh, they may not be uh, able to reach the market, fair market. And uh, what is the uh, suggestion to reach uh, the fair market by the small farmers, especially I'm talking about the small farmers. The ability of farmers to reach the market is very low, very low when we are replacing MSP with a DB. And one more point, um, uh, how will you address this tenancy agreement? Uh, how they can able to identify the tenancy agreement when they are form, transforming from the MSP to DSP? Sorry, uh, uh, DBT, right? The tenancy agreement is another one uh, 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 important issue uh, that I was uh, uh, thinking. And uh, one point uh, I want to ask very personally here: you, I think you are uh, assumed that free market uh, provides the very fair and stable price, but in practically it is not happening yet because the small farmers and the farmers are always is exploited. Right. And when we are taking out the MSP, how uh, that uh, uh, benefit to them? Though that the government is giving some kind of benefit, where whatever amount, how they will get benefited it. So, and it caused that more market fluctuation. 
and uh, uh, and it will affect the even normal uh, consumer and it will increase that uh, food inflation and again it affect that uh, food uh, food security it's all my point uh, uh, that's it but otherwise uh, and our paper actually so i enjoyed a lot and learned a lot of yeah. personal so, on this paper. so th thank you thank you professor suresh you you flagged the important points now uh, we turn to professor kedar vishnu uh, we are left with 10 minutes you know uh, vishnu so i i expect you to be a little brief and then we'll open to the question answer over to you Yes, yes. So just let me uh, quickly share my uh, few important slides. Just one minute. Uh, yeah, are you able to see? And is it moving down also? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah okay. Fine. Uh, just one minute. Let me make it on a full screen. And if it's moving, please let me know. It's moving, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So, uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank you, Professor Charan sir, and uh, of course, Ashok sir, for inviting me. And uh, I've greatly benefited from, of course, the uh, you know the uh, speaker talk, uh, Professor Satish, and of course, Sitomo and other colleagues. So, I'll not take much of the time. Uh, first, uh, of course, uh, this again work we and uh, my and myself and Dr. Pramod Kumar we work together. Now. Uh, I, I would like to you know share some of the interesting fact about the minimum support price. Just let me just uh, spin two minutes now. There's a lot of debate going on about the Swaminathan formula and you know the uh, the existing formula. So I just want to highlight here one thing that the Mr. Swaminathan community has pointed out three important costs. One is uh, of course so uh, so the so the important suggestion was given by Swaminathan was to. Uh, consider C2 for implementing the MSP. Now, what is the difference between A2 and C2? It just depends. We actually are only including three additional costs. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a too much uh, additional cost uh, in a C2. So, we have interest on a value of fixed uh, capital, rented value of own land, and imputed value of family labor. Now, these are the three additional costs which we are actually taking if we go ahead with the Swaminathan formula. Now, uh, let me actually try to you know show some of the very interesting finding that uh, no, many authors have talked about the farmer income, but still there exists a literature gap, particularly understanding whether farmer income has really gone up or taking some kind of place here. Now, what we did here is, of course, we have taken the all uh, uh, input cost, uh, you know, uh, considering like you know uh, bullock labor, human labor, seed, fertilizer, chemical, and others. Now, what we did we we took all the cost, we deflated using the CPI uh, and WPI. Now, what we did uh, for human labor, we include CPI for agriculture labor for Punjab. For bullock labor, we use WPI cattle. For fertilizer, we use WPI fertilizer. So, what I want to highlight here is that uh, we want to really understand whether farmer income has really increased uh, based on parcel price because we can't consider nominal price and understand what extent the farmer income has increased. So, we have actually tried to convert it all 14 input into constant price while taking all the deflectors for each input. Yeah, so this is how we did the exercise. Now, uh, this of course, Professor Pramod uh, sir has already presented. Okay, just want to highlight here. Now, if you go ahead with the Swaminathan formula, of course, uh, many academicians are highlighting that the, uh, the 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 MSP might go up by 36 to 48 percent for Paddy, and here is a picture for of course uh, for Haryana. Now, in case of Punjab, you see here. The MSP might goes up from 5 to 12% range. So this is a different. Now let me come back quickly because I have very limited time. Okay. Now let us look at the real income of the farmer and let's not uh, make a conclusion on the nominal thing that probably MSP might goes up by 50% and all, uh, which may not be the true uh, actually. Now let us look at the real price. So now first, uh, you know, as of now we are considering A2 and 50% of additional cost for considering the MSP. Now, here is an A2 cost. Now, if you look at this A2, there are 12 components which we have considered in A2 and deflected. So, here is a nominal a real price of the A2. So, you can see for Punjab, for paddy crop, from 1980 to 81 to 2000, 
22 to 23, you will find that the A2 cost is almost not increase at a large extent. But what you can find is that if you compare C2, now you see now in C2 we have added three more components. And if you consider that uh, uh, C2 at 2011 and 12 prices, you will see it is increasing. And how much is that? 62 uh, per hectare for paddy for Punjab. And how much is the A2? 33,000. Now that means if you consider A2, uh, if you consider C2 and not A2, our additional MSP might be relatively higher. But let's not forget one thing that if you look at the firm business income, this is a, a farmer income, uh, you know, uh, for Punjab or paddy crop, you see the income has increased for a Punjab, probably now you see 49,000, that means 20,000 per acre. Punjab farmer are making profit at 2011 and 12 price. Now, if you divide this thing, and if you just see now, this 20,000 income is not sufficient for farmer. And we are debating about the state which has been greatly benefited from the minimum support price. And here I want to highlight, particularly from the firm business income, that the situation of the farmer is not so good. Yeah, one point here. Now, considering again another crop for paddy, uh, of course, now let us understand. Uh, of course, Pr Pramod sir has presented this, but this is on a constant price. So much debate is going now about should we consider our own land value and then calculate the minimum support price? Yes, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a, a rational to consider that. But if you look at other uh, other two important component, their shares are quite negligible where only one component actually contribute. But remember, this is a suggestion only, and we have not adopted his methodology. So Swaminathan recommended that report, which government did not, uh, of course, uh, you know, implemented that. Now, one more again for wheat, if you look at again for Punjab farmer, you see here, farmer business income is still 34,870 in 2020 now, again, if you divide by 2.5, so what the point what I want to highlight here is that even many governments are promising that we will be able to double the farmer income. But if you compare from last 30, uh, in fact, 40 years, you see how much farmer income has gone up at real price. It, it may not make much sense because if you compare any other, uh, you know, cost. I think the farmer income is not going at a large extent, and here is a major concern for us. Now, uh, again, similarly, we also observe that the rented value of own land contribute 19,000 per hectare. Now, uh, there are a few, uh, I, mean, I, I, I would like to, you know, uh, now, uh, what are my suggestions? Should we accept the MSP or not? I Let me tell you that uh, we, in, we introduced this APMC, we have adopted this structure, from uh, from very long back, but still, so far we are not able to improve the efficiency of the existing APMC. So uh, one concern why we actually could not implement the three firm law, particularly on contract farming. Uh, in fact, we try to empirically quantify the asymmetric information opportunities behavior incurred by the farmer, and we found that there are 15 percent of the of, 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 of costs, additional costs farmer are incurring. So let's not forget. Uh, APMC or minimum support price play a very important role for the farmer. And even if you are talking about to increase, I think there is a need to increase the farmer. And here is one concern which we need to understand. I myself was an agriculture and I'm later when we lost the water, I shifted my field. There are many young individuals who are who want to do agriculture but are not, not able to do it. So let's not forget. Uh, we are uh, totally dependent on the agriculture, and if you're not able to increase the farmer, I think it's, it's going to be little difficult for us. And there are two important things which I want to highlight here. I'll just take one more minute. Uh, I think we need to, as uh, Professor Satish uh, sir has highlighted, we need to really think on uh, emphasizing on our institutional mechanism, why we are not still able to improve the consumer share in the farmer rupees. That is something which is important. Still, it is a question mark. It is very less. Second point which I want to highlight here is that 
Uh, even if we go for any other alternative system, we might have some drawback. So right now, let us think, let us debate, and let us improve the efficiency of the MSP because there is no other. There are not many programs which we which really a farmer are getting benefit from those programs. So with a very short time, I would conclude and looking forward for your question and answer. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Professor Kedar. Uh, you were very brief and you you raised very pertinent point. And uh, this is a what such a complex issue of the minimum support price that all five illustrious panelists gave different perspective, different uh, thoughts. Some are common, some are not so common. Uh, but but the the key point that that emerges from this discussion, very rich discussion. Let me also add my views on this. First thing, uh, I want to make it very clear. I have gone through very, very thoroughly the Swaminathan's reports. They are in volume and he has never said the C2 cost. Uh, he, uh, all of us know he, he was not an economist. He was a uh, scientist of great repute. Uh, agriculture scientists and uh, and people misquote him. He said C2 plus 50 percent. Let me make it clear. He said the cost plus 50 percent, which cost he was not. And I had the privilege of talking to him personally when he was obviously alive. And then uh, he said, and there is a official correspondence between him and CACP also, where he admitted he didn't mean the C2. That is one thing. Second point is C2 cost is not three more component. Government uh, draws A2 plus FL plus 50 percent and A2 plus FL, the family labor is already included. So it leaves two more component, the difference between C2 and A2 plus FL, which has rightly been pointed out all of these panelists, that is one. And third point is the difference between A2 plus FL and C2 is almost 30%. So if we increase the MSP, the MSP will increase by 45%. What is being decided if we switch over to C2? And, and I also want to make it clear the minimum support price is an instrument of pricing, not of income. So uh, to me, to, to expect that the farmer's income will increase in the same ratio as the government uh, or somebody's wages, that, that should be taken separately because it, it is a, a pricing instrument. And if government wants to help, and at the same time, I want to make it clear, and then one of the panels says that income of farmers is in distress, that I fully agree. But then we have to find some other way to help the farmers uh, through uh, any other way, but not through the instrument of pricing, which MSP, because MSP has to be sustainable in the market. Otherwise, if we increase, uh, which is market is not able to support uh, price, then where we will keep those MSP, that, that commodity, where we'll trade it, nobody will buy, and then it will be a wastage of the resources. We have to consider that aspect also and then when we make a po agriculture policy, this factor, it, to my mind, is very important. Coming to the suicide issue, uh, uh, I am extremely, extremely distressed when I hear and see the farmers are committing suicide. Undoubtedly, they are committing suicide. There are many reasons not necessarily related to agriculture. I'm not um, my my heart goes to them, but we have to see because as all of us are economists and statistician and the policy maker, we have to see what is the society it's uh, society behavior in the country and and the neighboring country and in the in, on this planet. The the proportion of farmer committing suicide is no more than the proportion of non-farmer committing suicide. That is the affidavit given by Ministry of Agriculture in the Supreme Court of India. I'm not undermining this. I want to make it abundantly clear. My sympathy is with the farmers. I'm not uh, making it less serious issue that farmers are committing. So all I am saying, the non-farmers ratio of 
our proportion of suicide is higher than the farmers committing the suicide. So, uh, but then this also shows whether farmer or non-farmer are committing suicide. It's a, it, to me, it is a very sleepless night and it also means society has failed because society has the responsibility to ensure each citizen, whether farmer or non-farmer, survive because life is a, is a, is a, word, is a right. It's a, it's a right to live and right to live and right to livelihood so we have to we have to address that issue from a different perspective and on on giving the regional pricing are the of the uh, commodity because the costs are different from different state to state and then agro climatic zone and other things now we have to see suppose we do it uh, differently for different geographical regions of the country now how we trade from one region to another because we'll be blocking and how those costs because the implementation will be very big issue because how the procurement will be there it will lead to so much corruption and chaos so uh, suppose i have to buy this mobile i pay 10000 uh, as i ever consider what is the cost to the producer if producer is producing at 9500 and selling at 10000 i will see who's who's selling with the same quality assuming quality standards are same who's who's selling at the least price and that is the same principle of the marketing has to be in agriculture so if farmers are not able to produce at competitive price at a price efficient if price efficiency or the production efficiency is not there it's it's not that uh, uh, we have to find a solution through the instrument of differential prices for different geographical region i mean that will be uh, very very difficult and to me it will be because we have to see the from the implementation point of view from the public procurement agency so that is that is an issue which has to be seen and finally i would like to say farmer need just two things getting the prices right and getting the market side once the farmers get the market side and pricing right i think everything it uh, will fall uh, in place and finally because I have I have analyzed the policy, uh, agriculture policy, right from the independent. Um, I mean, ever since the first five year plan from fifty two onwards, uh, our emphasis has been to produce more. That means on tonnage centric, we produce more. And the assumption in that policy was that if production increases, the farmers' income will automatically increase. I have seen large number of cases. When the farmers' production increases, the prices crash and therefore their income also crashes. So, uh, our policy Im Im implementation and intervention ought to be uh, to, to see that farmers' income increases. So, it has to be income-centric uh, agriculture policy rather than increasing the production centric uh, policy and and finally we have to see whatever is produced is sellable because uh, nowadays the whole uh, whole planet has become boundaryless so far international trade is concerned we have to buy and produce at a at a cost which is internationally competitive also so with these few things i I uh, stop here because of paucity of time. Otherwise, I can go on. It is, if we can take one or two questions in the in the uh, chat box, uh, uh, let us uh, farmers. There, there is one person who is asking farmers crop get different types of subsidy from central government as well as the state government. So rates could could not decide by farmer. So, if uh, any one of these uh, illustrious panelists can answer, please feel free or any other question you want to take up because we are overshooting the time. So, floor is open to, I will start with Professor Satish Ji, if he can address this question. Yeah, may I also, since uh, other panelists have also raised important issues, so may I start with yes. them, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, first of all, as um, you mentioned, you know, I think Chair has precisely mentioned MSP was is a price uh, policy. It's not an income policy. And in the olden times, we wanted to have more production. Therefore, price incentive was given to produce more. 
and we are no more a deficit uh, country and therefore that initial argument of msp probably has gone away uh, second i think may i go by uh, discussant uh, i think there are three four of them so let me uh, bring them together uh, the issue about c2 has always been raised right c2 plus 50% i'll give you just the you know the we discuss in uh, the ricardian rent in microeconomic class right um, you know in, in in england there was a criticism that corn prices are extremely high because of high rents being charged by the uh, uh, landlords now the reason the reason is that uh, high rental was not a result for high prices but high price was the result of because of which rents were high because there are high tariffs import duties were there on corn as in the price of corn was going up and therefore the economic rent earned by the efficient farmer was going up so it's not the other way around that the farmer rent is adding to the price but it's a higher price that creates higher rental so therefore i think it's not a good idea to take 50% on the uh, c2 because rental value gets decided because price is higher So higher price or higher rental, therefore higher rental, therefore another another fifty percent higher. It will create a ratcheting effect. So I think we should stick to probably A two itself. That's my humble submission. Uh, the uh, other thing was regarding uh, Professor Kedar also mentioned about supply chain in his PPT, how to get small farmers involved. And same issue, I think uh, Professor Suresh was also mentioning that how farmers ultimately small farmer will get the right price, right? so the issue is of course msp is one aspect of it but the three farm right. laws the two farm laws that we talked about one was about contract farming right so if right. Uh, contract farming is allowed it is in the interest of the companies to give the right imports to give the right quality advice and so that their prices will be also be better somebody say man that may not happen why not uh, fpos now fpos are very much successful in maharashtra and many other parts of the country so farmer producer organizations is also an answer to this right so msp is not to answer it's not a income substitute it's a price mechanism and third uh, look at cooperatives i mean amul has been extremely successful cooperative sugar cooperative with all its political angles to it but still in few states uh, sugar cooperatives are very successful so cooperatives is also another answer So I think contract farming, cooperatives, food producer organizations are solutions for small farmers to get into, so that they get the right price. So I think MSP is not necessarily the price; uh, should not be the uh, income support for them. Uh, talking about uh, issues like employment, I think Professor Koshari mentioned about you know, losing employment. Yes, that's like um, it's a frictional uh, employment, unemployment, right? I mean. if private sectors take uh, initiative these guys who are working in food corporation of india are going to probably work in private uh, uh, you know uh, warehouses so there will be a structural adjustment that will happen for sure i mean i'm not saying that will not happen immediately but that's likely to happen another point uh, professor koshari mentioned was about um, what about allied sectors right so i think as i said in my presentation also small farmer only barely 40% of the income comes from agriculture it is from poultry small poultry small the other things right and therefore when direct benefit transfer happens it is not to uh, it will go to small farmer meaning it will go to the small farmer who has larger chunk coming from the livestock or other small livestock uh, uh, such issues so therefore they will also benefit from this i suppose that's my understanding right. um related to um Uh, yeah i think one uh, dr suresh mentioned about will that environmental issue be taken care of if msp goes right i think when msp goes at the same time we are saying dbt why because subsidy should also go the fact that if the electricity is free that means i don't switch off the pump and therefore there is more flooding of water and therefore salinity of land is going up if urea is extremely subsidized you are tampering with the optimal choice of fertilizer on the farm farmers are using more because it is cheap and therefore uh, it is creating environmental problems right uh, so therefore uh, price in the market really tells you what is the optimal utilization of npk if that doesn't happen then environmental issues will come up therefore to help farmers don't disturb the market but give the direct benefit i think that is a better solution as i uh, see it 
uh, I think I've covered most of the issues. If there is one or two left out, I can always talk about it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Satish. Uh, yeah. Professor Pramod, um, please be brief because uh, other uh, and we are we have all overshot the time. Uh, so the you are your take on this. No, I do agree with the Satish that uh, the uh, uh, what he said uh, C two. Uh, I think uh, this C two A two uh, minimum support price. Uh, there is a uh, flaw in the calculation. Uh, the problem with minimum support price system is it was uh, uh, created for supporting farmers and uh, the other side there was. Uh, uh, system which supports the consumer. Uh, that was the time when we were in de uh, uh, great deficit. Now, I think administered prices imposing in this way, when you have the minimum support price system, it's not the maximum price. We have in all commodities maximum price, but in agriculture, we have minimum support price. And then we have 24 commodities with procurement of only two commodities. Uh, what it ensures that the market price for producer, for the farmers, it always uh, will remain less than minimum support price because there is no protection. But at the end of the intermediaries, traders, you will not find market price going below minimum support price. It sets a minimum floor for trader, not for the farmer. Mm -hmm. And that is the defect of this system where we are putting up a minimum support price, not supporting, not, not having the protection for farmers, but having the protection for uh, uh, the trader. And all the benefit goes to the trader. Consumer is paying much, much higher than the minimum support price, but farmer is not getting that. That is where the system needs to be thrown out, bring in minimum income uh, support through uh, direct support payment and remove the subsidy. I calculated subsidy as well as the support. Uh, you are curbing the prices down and then you pay subsidy per acre. Subsidy is not exceeding 10,000 to uh, 15,000, but the price by curbing the market price, which should have been 6,000, keeping it 2,000, you are making the farmer uh, the pauper. Farmer is in a very, very bad shape today because of this very, very bloody sub minimum support price system, which, which, which protects the trader and not the farmer. So bring in the minimum income support system in place of minimum support price, where you keep the market to uh, uh, settle down. Everything farmer will move away from that wheat and paddy. They will go into, uh, we are crying today. Uh, uh, today's uh, Times of India, if you read, we are still oriented rice and wheat, and that is creating all diabetes and all kind of uh, uh, our uh, uh, blood pressure problems because we are not moving from carbo to uh, more protein and uh, more, more uh, multivitamin system with fruit and vegetable. The farmers are not moving away. Only 10% is under horticulture and 60-70% uh, still under uh, this uh, wheat and rice. Our population uh, nutrition has to shift from wheat and rice from calorie system which was at that time now we need more nutrition balanced nutrition and pds also has to move into that direction that will happen only when you remove this administered price you bring in market price everything will get into uh, uh, the balance all countries are supporting agriculture you need support farmers but by income support not by uh, the protection Pricing of support. price support mm -hmm. Thank oh, you very much. Th thank you, Professor Pramod. Uh, uh, Professor Goyari, you just concluding remark in a minute's time. Uh, I any other comments now? I, I was only listening to uh, Professor Satish okay. Theodor's uh, lecture very uh, attentively and uh, with full interest. So, and I have also given a few comments. Uh, so, overall, I have enjoyed a lot. Okay, thank you. Thank so you. Professor Suresh? Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, in uh, my conclusion, 
Uh, of course, the MSP uh, actually is playing very uh, crucial role uh, in uh, providing income security to the farmers as well as uh, ensuring the national food security. Uh, it needs the reforms very clear as per that uh, uh, process of these uh, uh, documents and that other panelist uh, discussion. It's very clear that uh, the reforms is recorded. Uh, as suggested by uh, Professor Adiz, uh, the establishment of AFM is maybe uh, a, a small step to achieve uh, the reforms in IMSP. Uh, yeah, but we have to think uh, the DBT and uh, we have to, we should have a, a proper uh, uh, installation or a, uh, uh, the, some structure is recorded on the DBT or uh, implementation of DBT for the farmers. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you. Professor Kedar. Yeah, I'll not take much time, sir. Uh, well, uh, one thing, if we are sifting, if we're searching for any alternative mechanism, it is always, we have several drawbacks in MSP and let us accept it. But uh, one thing which I want to highlight here is that if there is any other direct benefit transfer, if the system is developing and if it's really helping the marginal farmer, it's a good a suggestion uh, which is given by, of course, Professor, uh, all the professor. Now, one thing which I want to highlight, I think this is a, I mean, I think we have to really think of bringing those three firm law, particularly the farmer producer trade and commerce, because unless and until we promote the contract farming, unless and until we emphasize more on agriculture uh, producers or uh, processing, I think the problems are not going to solve. But uh, last and very important point, which I want to highlight here, so far we have not adopted those, I mean, uh, uh, adopted, but not at a large extent, those direct benefit transfer scheme, not at large extent. Let us continue with the MSP, but let's not forget that we have already seen the real income of a farmer. If we are, con if we are considering A2 plus 50%, I think we need to have some kind of different mechanism. We can't go ahead with C2 plus 50, that's for sure. But some additional uh, percentage of a increase has to be there. That's what I feel. Thank you, sir. So thank you. Thank you, Professor. All five panelists, I am really thankful to each one of you, Professor Satish, Professor Pramod, Professor Suresh, Professor Goyari, Professor uh, Kedar, Vishnu, and all of them, I'm I'm grateful to the to the participant, the audience, and and Professor Sati because this shows that MSP is such a complex issue that we cannot resolve all the all the issues which have been flagged. But it's also served the purpose. What are the issue? We are taking cognizance of different perspective, and if you see each one of the panelists ever meant, it's so convincing that you can't say but when you listen to the other side that also looks very convincing so it's that also shows that msp is such a thing and the real fact is that it has been going on from 1965 to 2024 that means <laughs> almost 60 years it has withstood the test of time because all said and done what is the better maybe until we get a better uh, replacement for this obviously nobody can dispute it has a flaw but what is the better state and if we give everything to dbt who will produce because somebody has to produce the rice wheat or whatever you require in your play and whatever you require on your table so we have to have a play from plate to plow what you need because to me the, it has to be demand driven not what it suits to the farmer they produce but if i don't need that it and who will buy it so question is the farmer have to be smart enough to produce what the consumer needs and only then they can get the price and their income can be augmented and we have seen the price the the income level over the successive situation assessment survey uh, has shown that uh, farmers income has increased but it has not increased commensurately it has not increased in commensurate to the non-agriculture that's a fact nobody can deny but how we should do that is, to me uh, that an economist unless they produce more of what the society needs what the consumer needs unless they produce it 
they give and we have to see the per capita income is increasing therefore the demand for conventional and the traditional rice, rice or wheat will be moved away because people will demand more of fruits vegetable meat and so on so forth if the consumer per capita income is increasing which is increasing therefore farmer have to change their uh, milieu their their approach and that has to be uh, they have to calibrate their production according to demand and that is the only solution and i i am very convinced uh, 60000 farmers i have talked to them personally not in the group during last 20 years and i see each one of them are intelligent but somehow they are resource poor undoubtedly there can be no denying of the fact now how we can help as as we put our brain together to find a policy prescription which is implementable so that farmers income is augmented and they then only we have to see how how their cause is and lastly uh, Gold is gold when it is sold. What farmers produce is no less precious than the gold, but yet their income level remain very low. We have to see together how we can augment their income, and that is the that is the uh, challenge for all economists, our agriculture, and all those who have some uh, empathy with the farmer. So with these few words, I don't have the final solution, but I have slightly understood in some way uh, the farmer's problem. And I have flagged this issue. I am thankful to each one of the panelists who has enriched my my understanding of the farmer, the MSP in particular. Each one of my very uh, illuminated me with your with your understanding, with your research. And I am grateful to my uh, my. Uh, audience who are with us, who are taking interest, and and once again uh, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you, Professor Satish, Professor Pramod, Professor Goyari, Professor Suresh Gopal, and Professor uh, uh, Kedar Vishnu, and all of you. So thanks indeed. We will have the similarly we uh, the next webinar on on the coming uh, Friday. That's the exact topic and everything will be. Uh, uh, intimated to you i once again request you kindly to the extent possible please uh, join us on the next friday we'll send the details so the meeting is now over and thanks once again and have you have a wonderful weekend thank you thank you so thank much you, thank, you. thank you thank you sir. thank you nice to know you all thank